Well, as the UK slowly comes out of lockdown, there is hope the gyms could soon reopen. The Culture Secretary, Oliver Dowden, is due to make an announcement later today. So, is it safe for gyms to open their doors? Let's talk now to Dr Barrett Pankania, Senior Clinical Lecturer at the University of Exeter. Um, do you think this is the right time to, to open these places? I, I have one word, which is caution, 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 and more caution. Um, these are indoor places, and we heard from the WHO, World Health Organization, two days ago that there may be other additional parameters of virus transmission. They alluded to a aerosol mode of transmission as well. I think we should take this very seriously, that there may be, in a confined place, a additional mode of transmission as well. So I would advise, you're going to open, you're going to open, you're going to open anyway, because the government lets you. I think you should make your indoors outdoors. What I mean by that is you install superb ventilation facilities if you haven't got them. You call in a ventilation engineer and you make your indoors outdoor equivalent with full excess transfer of air to dilute the number of virus particles that may be in circulation. That's very expensive though, isn't it? We're seeing these images and, and, and gyms are, are doing things like using um, uh, antibacterial cleaners on all the equipment. But what, what if you were going to a gym? Should you wear a mask? I think so, absolutely. So in the absence of that very expensive uh, installation of machinery to force air through the premises, uh, one thing you can do to protect yourself is wear a mask. And I would say you are in a crowded place with lots of humans and lots of them um, secreting virus without having any symptoms you should wear a mask. What about swimming pools? Gyms are reopening. Are swimming pools safe, in your opinion? So again, with swimming pools, it's a bigger volume. So bigger volume, safer, smaller volumes, less safe. So if you were to pin me against the wall and say, which one is safer? I would say swimming pool, because by virtue of it being a bigger volume, it is safer. But again, I would limit the number of people in the swimming pool and I would try and do all I can to increase ventilation in that uh, indoor swimming pool arena. What would you describe as the worst pinch, worst pinch points in gyms? Is it the equipment where people are, as you say, you know, excreting a lot of air out their mouths, breathing very heavily? I think it is the close proximity to fellow human beings because uh, we can mitigate with uh, contaminated surfaces very easily, either wipe them down or make sure you don't touch your dirty hand to your nose and mouth. Uh, what we can't mitigate against is that hit from an infectious person onto you directly. Therefore, masks and the more people there are, the bigger the pinch point. What about the easing that we've seen so far across the UK? How long will it be, do you think, before we can say for certain that it hasn't led to a second peak? Well, <laughs> we have luck on our side. And the luck on our side is we're lifting the lockdown in the summer months. So a lot of the uh, unlocking of the lockdown and the activities are outdoor orientated. So I feel whilst I would expect the peak to start rising within three weeks, I think as a result of outdoor activities more so, uh, I'm looking more at September, October to see a rise in number of cases when the temperatures drop and people drop, start moving indoors. So you think it could be delayed for, for, for as long as then, but the, do you think we will definitely see one? I think so, and, and my parameters for saying so, and it's negative, but you know, I have to be honest and say it, which is we've got a background level of virus in the community circulating, and we are not immune, and most people have not been infected. Therefore, all the ingredients are in place, and if we are not careful, we will get a rise in number of cases, as we have seen in Germany, in South Korea, and in Leicester. What about nightclubs uh, and concert venues? I was up in Leeds yesterday talking to a nightclub owner and he says he just feels that their industry has been totally forgotten by the government, but, but he, he himself says he can't understand how they could safely reopen. I can't either because, you know, the definition of that nightclub is everybody is in close proximity, having a good time, dancing together. And I just can't see how you can mitigate against it. Uh, one way around it is to increase the volume of that nightclub, which is an outdoor marquee, an outdoor arena. It's risk mitigation. None of it is low risk or no risk. 
But one way to do it is increased circulation, fewer people, uh, masks, and clean surfaces. We can't achieve all of that in a nightclub. People are drinking, your guard is down. So have it more outdoorsy if you can. But in the UK, it's so cold, we can't have it outdoors. <laughs> uh, the test and trace system, uh, Sky News has, has revealed uh, some issues with that today. How do you feel it's gone? I've always been very disappointed with the test and track system because it was set up centrally, run centrally, and yet locally we have got experts, experts who know the lie of the land. And I, I, we've done this before with the swine flu pandemic. We tested locally, we contact traced locally, and we did a good job. So for us to have set up a parallel system, centrally run, uh, is difficult. And we, ha we lack precision because we are not testing extensively. I appreciate we're going to test extensively. But with contact tracing, I advise, please do it locally. You will get much better results. Dr. Barrett Pankania, good to talk Thank to you, you as ever. Thank you. Thank you.